In a previous episode, we went to pneumatic engineering and met with Bethany, an applications engineer. We had a lot more content, so here's some bonus footage of our entire time there. Enjoy. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. This is Bethany with Pneumatic Engineering. She's gonna show us some of our products. So we got a UR3, this tiny little guy. UR10, that's obviously the robot we have. They painted the caps red. And uh, there's UR5 in another room. But we just wanna see this device here. So first of all, Bethany, what is this called? Uh, so this is actually the ASCII cube. Okay. Um, it's part of Acerol. Uh -huh. um, there's different sizes and shapes. Uh, uh -huh. Usually, like they started off with a little tiny stuff. Okay. Because they were making watches. Uh huh. So doing a bunch of like picking and placing of watch parts. Okay. Um, they've gotten to a really big size, so now it's like kind of out to here. Oh, okay. Um, all it does is it just shakes parts. Huh. So if you want to try and grab um, parts in a certain orientation, uh -huh. um, you can kind of shake it around. Okay. Um, it can go like left, right, back, forward, wow. different corners. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. So this, um, so the you, someone would buy this. Mm -hmm. I see this, but then there's also this. This comes with it. Um, so this is actually a separate thing. This is a Cognex camera. Okay. Um, and so essentially, it integrates all together. Uh -huh. So the um, robot looks for a part, okay. and the camera tells the robot where the part where is. Where it's at. Um, and this will shake the parts. So let's say you had a bunch of stuff in like a tray uh -huh. and you have it shake down to this little container. Okay. And then that way it can go and find the part and grab and go. So why would it shake it? Like so that they're not stacked on each other or? Um, so let's say they were all like over here. Okay. And you wanted some parts in the middle. Okay. That would be a reason. Um, oh. If you wanted to kind of have them stand up on itself that uh -huh. way, <laughs> that's a reason. Wow. Um, so it can do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, if you want it on a certain corner uh -huh. or in the middle, center, all of that. Okay, so this, it, does the customer, this comes with the unit, or but you can order different styles of these trays? or, or There's th different sizes uh -huh. um, to this. This little plate, they actually have their um, SOLIDWORK model uh -huh. online, so you can kind of create grooves um, so that the parts kind of fall into place Okay. Um, if you needed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but standard, it comes with this. Okay. Just a regular white plate. So us with machining capabilities, we could like machine this. Is this like UHMW, I'm, I'm assuming, and then just make something custom for our specific parts? Exactly. That's cool. Okay. And then you just take this part off and yeah. put that part on and then you're good to go. So is this the smallest unit? No. So the smallest one is literally like that big. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so really tiny and okay. then it actually gets to really big. Okay. Um, so this is kind of like the middle ground size. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the UR3, I like this. This is a gripper. Is it by Robotique? Uh, no, this is New Scale. So they okay. actually just came out with um, grippers. Okay. Um, and it actually measures the parts. So you can kind of calibrate it so that it tells you exactly the size of the part that you're grabbing. Okay. So it grabs it and then it tells it the size of what it grabbed? Exactly. So if okay. you had different sizes of parts, uh -huh. you can separate it based off of the size of the part. Okay. So say you had some pins that were a half inch long, quarter inch diameter, and it picked it up in the half inch size, it's gonna, it could put it down and turn and so, exactly. so it knows. Okay. So you could have one container for the half inch yeah. and one container for the quarter inch. Okay. You can go and grab all the parts and say, okay, this one's half inch, I'm going to put you there. This one's <laughs> quarter cool. inch, I'm going to put you here. Okay. Yeah. And I noticed that this doesn't have some cord strung all the way back. It's plugged right into the wrist. Exactly. Okay. That's um, cool. So with all the E-Series robots, um, mm -hmm. you are now able to plug in your tool onto oh. this little area right here. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so most of the grippers now are coming out with ways so you can just connect directly to it. Okay. So you don't have all the wires kind of coming out. Yeah, okay. So we're using a vacuum mm -hmm. cups. Mm -hmm. And so obviously we need to provide vacuum power to it. So mm -hmm. that's not an option for us. But if we had one of these plug and play, we could just plug in and just go. Exactly. That's awesome. And this one actually, this, this, and this all have these things called UR caps. They're uh -huh. kind of like if you got iPhone apps on the uh -huh. Apple Store. Okay. Um, so you just plug it into uh, the UR. Okay. And then it has its own screen that you can do all the programming. So you don't Got have it. to do any like scripting or anything like that. It has oh, its own man. separate thing. Okay. So. so my story is I bought a UR 10 four years ago, mm -hmm. and it, it 
it, uh, I had problems with it, the software, I'm like, boy, this is not intuitive. Mm -hmm. And then I had a problem with, there was like two suppliers, Robotique and another one, and you had to buy everything and the cameras were 10, 20, 30, 50,000, you know, and in four years, it's matured so much, ton of suppliers. So that's why I'm here. I'm excited to see some of this stuff. Yeah. So um, one of my questions is something like this. I mean, this is just what would have cost $10,000 five or six years ago, they're below 5,000, 3,000 in that price range, depending um, on the size? Some, I'm not entirely sure uh -huh. of the price of that. Okay. Um, the good news is now, since there's so many options uh -huh. with so many different UR caps, yeah. um, and all of their stuff is on their UR site. Okay. Um, so you're able to look up which ones actually have a UR cap. Yeah. Um, and you can go from really like pretty inexpensive to right. kind of crazy stuff. Yeah. So now they have um, stuff that does bin picking. Uh -huh. So it actually takes a three-dimensional picture uh -huh. and it can go and grab parts within a bin. So okay. I mean, we're getting like crazy stuff now. <laughs> so so you're not buying something and over buying it. Well, this is the only option. It cost me 10 grand and I'm only picking up these little things. It's overkill. You buy exactly what you need exactly. nowadays. That's great. And that's where we're kind of where we come in. Okay. So uh, we find out what your application is uh -huh. and we can say, oh, this would work with this or this would work with that. Okay. So that's kind of like what we do. So. Yeah. That's cool. Can kind of help you out with that. Okay. All right. So can you show us how this works? Yeah. Okay. So essentially what's going to happen mm -hmm. um, is the camera's going to take a picture. Okay. And I taught it. Uh -huh. So I have the screen right here. Yeah. I taught what the part is supposed to look like. Okay. So on the bottom here, you can see the part. Okay. So it's going and looking for that part within this area right here. Okay. Um, if it doesn't find the part when it first takes the picture, mm -hmm. this will shake until it finds the part. Cool. So um, right now, because they're all on the side, uh -huh. we can run the program and it will shake until it finds the Okay. So see how it kind of still hasn't found anything within uh -huh. that little scare? Right. So now it found the part uh -huh. and it's gonna grab it, pick it up, uh -huh. and then it will go inside the cup. Got so, it, okay. That's cool. Yeah, so it will shake. Um, let me get this to sometimes. And like I said, you can kind of get the um, different kinds okay. of UR caps to go. Yeah. So I can turn this on and off, get okay. that to work. Hmm. So it's just turned off? Yeah, pretty much. And okay. you, you kind of, with this one specifically, uh -huh. you have to um, kind of calibrate it to make sure it works and Got everything it. like that. All right, so the light's on. Can we, that means it's ready to go, right? Yes. Can, you, can you see it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. Right. Okay. So it took a picture mm -hmm. with the light on. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it found the part within the certain area. Okay. Um, if it doesn't find the part, that's when it goes and shakes. Okay. Until it finds a part in the area that it's looking okay. for. And it's roughly the center of the tray. Exactly. So yeah. I actually, within the Cognex camera, can set the border okay. um, that I want to pick from. Yeah, nice. Um, so that little red box you see here, yeah. um, it's looking for parts within that box. Okay. And then it will shake until it finds the correct spot. Uh, like a good candidate to pick up. Exactly. Okay, because it looked like some were in it, but they were like touching each other, and so it rejects that. So you can kind of teach like the um, tolerance value okay. um, of which to find it. So if it sees it, but it's kind of rotated and yeah. you don't want it to be rotated, you can kind of oh, change those it. so that it fits exactly where you want it to okay. be. Okay, all right. <laughs> and that's just refill. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so you told it we want like five or something. Or four, exactly. Yeah. So you That's can cool. program it to say like, I want you to pick up continuously. Okay. Um, in this particular retrospect, I set it to say, okay, I want you to go five times. Okay. Once you picked up five good parts, I want you to go and dump the bucket back. Okay. So that you have parts again. So, nice. Um, wow. And that can kind of be replaced with something like, okay, if I pick up five good parts, I want you to shake parts back into the tray. Okay. So that's another option that you yeah. can do. Yeah, okay. So this is good for, for uh, trade shows. You bring this. Exactly. And Actually, around. that's what we've been using it yeah, for. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. And like I said, all of this programming, um, so I had to teach the part within the Cognex program, mm -hmm. but other than like teaching it to shake or um, teaching it to take a picture, all that, that was all done within the UR program. Okay, all right. So it, after it finds one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of 
to you. Because it wants it one to be like flat. Like I could tell it's gonna should go mm -hmm. get that one. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And if I were to custom make this little tray uh -huh. as well, I can make grooves in it so that it would fall within the groove, and it, it would be easier to go ahead and pick that up. Okay. Yeah. Because you're just relying on random. Exactly. Chance right now. Exactly. And I can also fine tune um, the the um, how hard it shakes. Uh -huh. I can um, change the time. I can change all that. Okay. So right now it's doing it randomly. Right. Um, but if I really wanted to do an application, uh -huh. um, I could say like I want you to shake all of the parts to dead center. Okay. And then for one second, kind of break it up so that there's just um, a little scatter, but uh -huh. they're all dead center. Okay. So I, I have the ability to change all that as okay. well. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Can we pause it yeah, right now? Yeah, of course. Okay. And that's the beauty. You just, you have the screen in front of you. You could hold it. You could put it mm -hmm. on a wall. Exactly. Hit pause, hit start. Okay, cool. So I noticed you, you all also have that laptop. Mm -hmm. um, so it's connected Ethernet to the controller and so everything's always talking. Yes. So we actually have a bunch of stuff under here. Okay. Um, there's switches in there, Ethernet switches. Okay. Um, so the ASCII cube. The Cognex camera, it's all connected within that switch. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. Okay. So what I need to do is go back, research UR caps, because it's mm -hmm. the first time I had heard it, mm -hmm. and then try and maybe if I have some type of uh, end effector, if it has a UR cap, that's preferred because it's literally plug and play, it's right? It's plug and play, exactly. That's awesome. Okay. And the the Cognex camera, that software, it's is that considered a UR cap or? It does have a UR cap. Okay. So um, the teaching of the object is done within uh, the Cognex program. Okay. Uh -huh. But there is a way where you can tell the camera the space you're working it uh -huh. in. So originally you had to put like a little grid on the on the table and you had to say, okay, this grid meant this spot in space. Right. So the robot knew where it was in relation to the camera. Got it. But now the um, UR cap does that all for you. Okay. So you just teach a bunch of points and then it tells the camera, okay, this is where the robot is okay. in relationship to me. Got it. Okay. So one thing I'm really interested in mm -hmm. is the wrist mounted cam camera for like the UR10. Mm -hmm. It's essentially the same thing. So it tilts, you give it a place where it's positioning the camera essentially, taking a picture and then it will go identify the part. And that's all done in the UR control. Exactly. Okay. So there's not a separate program for the Robotique one. The, okay. the Robotique one, um, I do all the programming thing okay. within here. Yeah. Okay. All right. See, I like that. Yes. I think that has a lot of potential. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. And they keep it, um, they've been doing a bunch of different uh, upgrades and things like that. So now you uh -huh. can uh, do the like different like changes in color and things okay. like that. So it continuously gets better. So and better. if you wanted to pick up only red whatever, red parts, it would go and grab only red parts out of blue? If, you, if you taught it, uh, there's a way where you can say like different kind of color relations. So okay. um, now you can go ahead and program with color as well. Oh yeah. man, that's it's getting better and better and yeah. better. <laughs> wow, okay. Because um, you guys came out and did a, a demo about six months ago and that wasn't a possibility back then, but mm -hmm. now it is. So. Yeah, so like I said, they, they just uh, released that um, like a couple of months ago. That's really cool, yeah. okay. Wow, great. All right, and Bethany, I also noticed this yes. right over here. <laughs> this is what I'm going to be using. Not mm -hmm. this, but I'm curious. This is a vacuum, right? Yes, it is. Okay, and it looks like it plugs in. Mm -hmm. So the robot is turning this on and off, but obviously you need a vacuum supply. Exactly. Okay. Um, so whenever I run the program, um, it is off mm -hmm. until I tell it to turn on. Um, so you have it plugged into the air and everything like that, but uh -huh. then once it turns itself on, then is when it actually does the vacuum. Okay, so it's normally closed, Correct. and then the, the it signals to, to open it, and which lets. Um, now is this air pressure, and it creates venturi, or is it actual vacuum? It's vacuum. Okay, yeah. good. All right, so that line, don't pinch Goes that one. Goes all the way that way. <laughs> to a, a separate off-site vacuum yes. pump. Okay. <laughs> And then, um, okay, my, I'm curious about this. When you have a stack, mm -hmm. what's the application? Because that stack gets shorter and shorter. Right. Do you have to program the thickness? Does it sense pressure? How does that work? So actually, one of the things that comes with the UR mm -hmm. is a palletizing sequence. Okay. Um, so I just teach the top mm -hmm. um, and the bottom point in which I'm going to pick up. Okay. And I say, I want you to pick up six parts within that. Okay. Um, go a straight line. Um, and it does it all for you. Okay. So I just have to teach 
the approach and uh -huh. pick a point. Okay. And then the last and the first point. Yeah. So you would you would uh, teach like the bottom piece, mm -hmm. put it there, save that waypoint, mm -hmm. and then fill up the stack, teach at the top one, and mm -hmm. say that there's six pieces in exactly. between, mm -hmm. and it will calculate the distance. It will do it all for you. Okay. So uh, sometimes we're well, we are going to be running plates that, that vary in thickness just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that it can go down until it uh, senses force? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Is it also palletizing? Um, not in the palletizing wizard, okay. um, but you can do something like an if statement or a different type of programming that says, if I sense a certain force, I want you to do this action. Okay. So that's an option as well. Okay. So I haven't programmed a UR in like four years, but I think it's an L move where it moves linear. Yes, or, it okay. does. Mm -hmm. And then when it, when it senses this much force, mm -hmm. then stop, activate, go up to the next waypoint, mm -hmm. go do something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. All right. It's all coming back. There you go. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. So I noticed behind us there's a few more end effectors. Mm -hmm. Can we look at those yeah, real quick? Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. So this is a Zimmer one and this is Robotique. Okay. Um, like I was saying before, there's so many different options for different applications that yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Um, this is the Handy from Robotique and then a Zimmer gripper. Okay. Um, if it doesn't have uh, a UR cap, uh -huh. you just plug it in and do the same thing that we were doing here where we right. just say high or low for okay. the tool. Okay. Now, one of the um, benefits of a UR, if I'm standing here and it moves and, and it bumps me, it'll stop. Yes. Do these grippers have the same capability? Like if I'm setting it up and I accidentally pinch my finger or something, will it go, oh, that's... Not not yet. Okay. Um, I'm sure in the future we'll yeah. probably get to that point. Okay. Um, the robot itself is the collaborative part. Okay. Um, so anything else that attaches to it is not necessarily collaborative, but um, that this makes specifically sense. does. Yes. Okay. But also with these, you can you can change the amount of force it exerts, right? Uh, with this one specifically, yeah. Uh -huh. So okay. you can do the different forces, you can do different speeds mm -hmm. that you want to open and close, you can even do uh, different positioning. So okay. if you want to only close halfway, right. you can do that as well. So you could pick up a steel bar or an egg mm -hmm. and specify we're not going to crush the egg, but we really need to grip it hard to pick up that steel rod. Yes, that's so really you can cool. you can vary forces that way, yeah. Okay, is that, and that's pretty much standard with anyone that plug into the robot? Like they're servo driven? Or In is it just a robot? In terms of controlling the forces? The, the speed, the force? Um, I just know for sure, for certain that this one does. Okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that. Okay. <laughs> I have so to play around. They're with all it. a little bit different. Yeah, so exactly. So you just have to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that's fascinating. Great idea. 3D printing the fingers. So um, we have a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. uh, what um, what type of info? What do I need to know when I print grippers? So depending on what you're picking up, mm -hmm. if you need something with high forces, things okay. with metals, uh -huh. um, we usually do like 75. Percent to okay. percent in fill. So pretty dense. Yeah. Okay. Um, but other things, like if you're not picking up heavy objects or you're just kind of doing yeah. lightweight stuff, um, we usually do 25, 50. Percent. Okay. Yeah. Because I can feel this is pretty dense. Yes. You know, it feels <laughs> yeah. like 100%. Mm -hmm. um, like the cell phone holder I have on my desk is 8% in fill. Mm -hmm. It holds a cell phone. So that's, that's a great idea. Picked up another idea. Great. Awesome. Okay. Well, I've learned so much. Awesome. Bethany, thanks so much for your time. Let's head back, guys. Hey guys, I hope that bonus content was helpful to you. Now, if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe right here, or you can click this card to the entire robot series. So you got a couple choices here. So I'd do that, and then I'd do that. So yeah, a couple choices.